Hi, Randy K7AGE. I thought I would build up a um, power output bridge based on the design from Don Cantrell, uh, ND6T, from his BitX uh, Hex um, blog page. He has a lot of modifications for the BitX. And he built his on a little printed circuit board to mount right on the back of his BitX40 case. And it has a pass-through for the RF connector, along with a couple toroids. And he used the um, processor on the Radrino board to actually measure the voltage to give him a relative output. So if you'd like to build it that way, you can go to his website and find information about how he did that. So this is a real common SWR meter schematic, although it's not showing the metering circuitry, just the, the bridge part. And it's based around two uh, toroidal transformers with one turn on one side and ten turns on the other side. So with a toroid, one turn is just the wire passing through the core. It doesn't come back around a second time. So the RF passes through this transformer through the one turn tap and goes out to the antenna. So this is sensing the current on the line. The voltage is sensed with this second transformer using the ten turn side. Um, and then with the one turn side on each side of that um, pass through of the um, of the core, we have the two detectors to detect voltage for the forward path of the uh, RF going through and also voltage for the reverse pass. So if you just want to build a relative output meter, you can just use the forward. If you want to build an SWR meter, you look at both and calibrate and then they scale on the meter. Or you could even use a computer, uh, measure the two voltages and then calculate the SWR. And if you'd really like to know how this circuit works, I would recommend going and watching Alan's video, W2AEW, and he'll explain and show you with an oscilloscope how this all works. Okay, here's the parts list for the meter. Um, I need two 50 ohm resistors. Well, I didn't have any 50 ohm resistors in my junk box, but I do have 100 ohm resistors. And if you take two 100 ohm resistors and connect them in parallel, you'll have 50 ohms. So. There's four 100 ohm resistors for that. Uh, then I need uh, two 220 K ohm resistors, red, red, yellows. Um, next thing I need is 2.1 microfarad little disc ceramic capacitors. They're labeled 104. And then for the diodes, you can use either one in 34A diodes, which I only have two of those left, so I'm not going to use those. But I have a whole bunch of the 1N5711s left over from a previous project. So I have my diodes. And then the toroidal cores, I have uh, I bought a bag of 25 of the FT37-43 um, cores from kits and parts. They have a lot of this type of material, a lot of, a lot of toroids and all different diameters and different uh, uh, mixtures of the ferrite. So I have a bag of 25 of those. So I'm all set. And I also bought uh, 10 feet of number 24 uh, enameled magnet wire to wind the toroids with. So I'm going to build my meter old school style using uh, a 7 lug soldering terminal strip. I've got it drawn out. Let's see how I'm going to put the parts on here. So here's basically how I'm going to try and build this. We see how it works out. Basically, the two toroids are supported using their 10-turn windings of, of the transformer. Uh, the lugs on the end I will use for ground, and I will interconnect those even though I don't show them on here. Um, the one turn from the antenna will be on this lug, and it'll just pass through. Uh, the one turn here comes off the 10-turn over here and passes through. And then the diodes and the resistors will be on these other lugs connected typically to ground. And this lug here will be the reverse output. And this lug here will be the forward output. So that's hopefully what it's going to look like. Okay, I'm going to wind the toroid. I've cut off about 8 inches of the wire. And I have this scribe here. And I've just passed the core down over the top of the scribe. So that'll help hold it in place. So basically I'm going to run the wire up through the bottom. And I'm going to leave about one inch or so and then bend it down. And the first few are kind of hard to, to get going because everything's kind of loose. But I'm going to feed the wire up through the 
the core. So just passing the wire through was the first turn. Every time the wire goes through the core, it counts as one, one turn. So now I have two turns. And I pull that tight. And now I'm going to run the next turn through. And you don't want it to overlap. Never want to overlap these when you're doing that. So that's the third. So, you know, a lot of people just say, oh, I got to wind a toroid. It's so hard. Well, it just takes a little bit of time. You just do it slowly, and you'll be all right. So that's turn four. And let's just see how that looks on the inside. So that's how it's looking so far. I think that'll be fine. And just pull that tight, bring the wire around. You also don't want to get any kinks in the wire. So I just keep working at this. 10 turns is not a real complicated. Let me just check my count here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, I pull that tight, turn it around. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and one last. Last pass through. Will be ten. Move this out of the way. And just want to now kind of spread the turns around. Double check that nothing's overlapping. And there is my 10 turns. So it's a little bit of work to get the insulation off of the enameled wire. Uh, there's several different ways to do it. You can you know, scrape it with an X-Acto knife, which is probably what I'll end up doing. Or if you have some real fine sandpaper, you can sand it off. And if you bought the fancy wire, you can uh, melt the enameled insulation off. But you just can't solder it the way it is, so you need to scrape this down to clear copper but I'll wait and do that when I get ready to solder it onto the terminal strip well I wound my second toroid but I think that's all we have time for right now so in the next video I will start soldering everything onto the terminal strip so stay tuned thanks for watching Randy K7AGE